I'm definitely going to tell my kids that I want this for Mother's Day. We're back in the Stone Creek Kitchen with Brian Fierstein. He is the executive chef of Cask 63. We're making chocolate profiteroles, and we've already whipped up the dough. Yeah. And is this going to be our filling? This is the start of our filling. So we're making whipped cream. Okay. Whipped cream. Whipped cream. That's a traditional filling in a profiterole. You could do um, whatever you want, though. If you wanted to do something a little more rich, say you did an eclair, you could make uh, pudding, vanilla pudding, oh, chocolate yum. pudding, whatever you, you wanted to do. You could do chocolate whipped cream. You could do chocolate whipped cream if you wanted to. But definitely the key with this, if you're not going to use a mixer and you want to do it by hand, or even if you are going to use a, an electric mixer, is to put the mixing bowl in the freezer. Get the bowl really oh. cold before you put the cream in. It'll, it'll cut the time in half. Because then, it helps it. Because if the cream needs to be extremely cold, and if you put it into a warm bowl, it, it's a lot easier to whip the air volume if it's really cold. Okay, good so, to know. And then if you are going to do it by hand, another trick is to take a wet towel or a towel and just wrap it around the bowl, uh -huh. and it'll keep it from sliding around on the counter. So We learned two tips this that's morning. It. Well, and one other one, too. If you, know, if you go to the kitchen store and you see that you know, they have like 20 different kinds of whisks, uh -huh. the best thing for doing whipped cream would be to get one that has a lot of volume, a big wide whisk with really, As with, to those little yeah, guys? with really thin wires instead of something that's very stiff, which would be really good for like a sauce or something that's really thick. But this will allow you to get the air volume and to break through. To it. break through. So we're just gonna do this, and I kind of started a little bit already, but it should, you know, you can see it should come together pretty fast. Now, what did you? What's in there? Just cream. Just heavy cream. cream. So you just start with a quart of heavy cream, and basically you're just gonna. Continue to whip the cream until it gets stiff, and I'm going to let you start doing that. Okay. You, you know, I saw you doing some exercises earlier. Right. <laughs> I'm going to grab a little bit of sugar as you're doing that. You got it. It's almost there. It's going to take like. And it's because that the bowl was was, was cold. Cold. Yeah. Look at that. I'm going to add just a little bit of powdered sugar into it, just so it's sweet. Okay. And you could not do sugar if you didn't want to do sugar. You now could add we, whatever flavor you wanted. If to we as wanted well. chocolate whipped cream, would. You could, could we you add know, cocoa or, so, or we need well, it sweet? Yeah, you, I wouldn't necessarily add cocoa oh my because gosh. it's bitter, but I would add... Did that know, sugar do something? Because it got thick yeah, really fast. It did because there's a little bit... Powdered sugar actually has a little bit of cornstarch in it and it actually helps to thicken up a little. Oh my gosh, this is a great exercise okay, so, for your forearm. So you're good right there. Basically, all you're looking for is stiff peaks. You want it to be able to hold a peak up on the whip. Okay. I'm going to add a little bit of vanilla. But if you wanted to, you know, if you wanted to make a grown-up version of this, you could add Kahlua, you could add creme de coco or mm. Godiva liqueur or something like that. And basically, just going to mix the vanilla in. Well, like I do cream. all the time, I think I interrupted you when I was asking you how to make it chocolate whipped cream. So you would just basically melt some chocolate and, and fold a little right. bit of chocolate into that. But you're better off instead of doing whipped cream would be to do chocolate pudding because it would okay. hold up a lot better in there. I'm going to go to the oven and grab our profiteroles that we've already baked. Okay. You mean your cream puffs? My cream puffs. Okay. Do you call them profiteroles at the restaurant? Yeah, because I mean, that is the profiterole is a smaller size. You okay. can call it a cream puff either way, whatever you wanted to do. So you can see, I mean, they're nice and light and flaky, just like we had. And I'm going to reach down and grab, I have another pastry bag. Where did I right put here. it? Oh, I've got it right here. Okay. As I drop it. That's okay. That's okay. So, and I'm just going to start with a plain metal tip. Again, you could do this with a Ziploc. But really, if you don't have a plain tip or a pastry bag, your best bet to do it at home would be to just take the cream puff, take your knife, and cut it open and then add a little bit of whipped cream into okay. it. But because we have this pastry bag, we're just going to grab. The kids would have fun making this. The spatula right here. Yeah, and the, you know, it is a lot of fun. And, and really, I mean, there's nothing, you know, everything can be found at the store. It can, you know, be made with stuff that you should hopefully have lying around, flour, butter, right. water. And if you don't have the cream, like I said, you can grab a little bit of, bit of pudding or something along those lines. And then basically, I'm going to let you fill a couple of them too. Okay. But basically, you want to just work the cream down to the end of the bag until you see it start to come out. And then you're just going to, well, here's the one that we did earlier. So basically, you could just fill it up and then do that. But if you have the ones like this, you're just basically going to insert the pastry tip in until you start to see the cream come out. Okay. I think I could do that. I think you can too. And basically, you just want to get that tip in. Right. So that's why the metal tip works. Yeah. It and just you helps. need the, yep. And the tip will basically help you get through. Okay. All right. I'll hold that. Okay. You got it? Uh-huh. I Just, think. You got it. I do? Yep. Oh. Oh. Maybe. Ah, that's okay. You know, you should, you, <laughs> I've never done that before, and it was hard to tell if... All right, let me help you. Let me get this going again. Okay. We'll do, you we'll, can do it. I'll do another one. Yeah, we'll you can do another one. We'll get another one going. 
I think you you did something to it before I started. Okay, it's it's definitely my it's, it's definitely totally my your fault. fault. <laughs> definitely my fault. So basically, you know, you just want to continue to to make these. And the good thing about them is you can do these ahead of time with the cream and then freeze them. Okay. So if you really ever wanted to have a party or anything, you could always have these ready to go in right, the freezer. Right, I like frozen cream puffs. Okay, what are we going to do when we come back? When we come back, we're going to make our chocolate, melt it. We're going to add a little bit of orange zest into it, mm. dip our profiteroles, and make some Graminier marinated strawberries. And eat it. And eat it. And try it, the most Definitely. important thing. Definitely. Okay, we're going to add strawberries and chocolate and all the good <laughs> stuff when we come back.